And that's the song that they closed the workshop out with on Friday evening. We thank you, choir, Sister Dominique and Reverend Kenner, for your work has really paid off. And just know that your reward may not be here, but certainly you'll get your reward later on. Amen. Greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we come now to share a word with you. Uh, if you give me about five or ten minutes, or maybe so, uh, we're going to try to let you go. Because I know you all are excited on taking your journey. Are you there yet? Luke chapter 7. Will you stand? We're going to begin at verse number 40. Last week I preached from the previous verses and, and I, I, the Spirit of the Lord led me right back to this section. Verse 40 begins, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50, about 50 days wages. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which one of, the, which, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou givest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I have come, came, had not ceased to kiss my feet. Amen. My head with oil thou doest not anoint. But this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loves much, but to whom little is given, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thou sins are forgiven. Amen. Father, we thank you right now for what you have allowed us to go through that you could bring us through. Now, God, we ask you to just allow your Holy Spirit to anoint us afresh from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Amen. Oh, God, stand behind this sacred desk that they see more of you and less of me. Speak, Jesus, through these lips of clay words you desire your people to hear. Oh God, anoint the ears that not only be healed, but doers of your word. And as we stand on the wall of this gospel, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here in this text, I don't know about you, but to me, it's showing an example. And it's telling us no matter how many sins you have already committed, don't feel that you cannot have them forgiven. And you can't point a finger at somebody without looking at yourself first. I, I know many of us, we reach the age where we seem like we are perfect. Everything that we do is perfect. Everything that somebody else do is bad. It's against the rule. It's all of this and all of that. But didn't Jesus tell us that before we can remove the moke out of our brother's eye, we got to first get it out of our own eye. I mean, it's a difficult thing to judge ourselves. Simply because we are immersed 
in ourselves. Yes. We want to take care of the me factor. So what I do is all right and what you do is all wrong. Okay. And because I don't take an, a self-examination every now and then, I don't stand in the mirror and look at myself every now and then to just take a peek and see on the inside because they say that the eyes are the mirror of the soul. Right. And sometimes you got to look deep in your own eyes to see what other folks see. Uh, I don't know about you all, but I, I kind of like uh, the movie that Denzel Washington film called The Equalizer. Uh, when he was sitting in front of his enemy, uh, who was a Russian, and he was trying to kill or uh, take care of Denzel, uh, he asked him, asked Denzel a question. He said, Mr. McCall, tell me what you see when you look at me. And so Denzel goes on to explain to him his life and what he had, what had happened to him in his life and all that. And then when he finished telling him, he said, you know, I promised somebody that I love very deeply at one time because I've done some bad things in my life. It's good for you to recognize that you have done some things in your life that weren't good. You can't just point the finger at somebody else. You, you've done some stuff that you're not too proud of. He said, and I promised them that I would put that away. He said, but for you, I'll make an exception. He said, now you ask me. What did I see when I look at you? He said, I'm asking you, what do you see when you look at me? And I got some good question to ask each one of us. Mm -hmm. What do you see when you look at me? Uh, is your idea of, of me being who I am uh, somehow above sin or somehow above indiscretion? Yes. Uh, you got to understand that Paul said we die daily. There's no way that you and I can be free from sin because we're in these meat bodies. Yes. Sin, Paul says that, that when I would do right, yes. uh, it's on my right and it's on my left. Yes. When I would do right, uh -huh. seems like every now and then my mind tells me what is right. Something always steps up and shows me something different that I know is not right. Oh. Okay. Uh, some of us have come to the crossroads of our life. Uh, we have come to the point where we have a stop sign and we don't know which way to go. Well, I tell you, don't turn around and go back. If you make a left turn, stick with it. But if you make the right turn, you're going to be right on the right road. Can I have a witness here? Amen. When you decide you're going to do that. See, you got to compare what you've done with what you're looking at when you examine yourself. You haven't always been squeaky clean. Amen. I know some of us say we haven't done this, we ain't done that because others do this and others do that. But you have done something. Yeah. You haven't crossed every T and dotted every I. Amen. So you don't need to point your finger at me and tell me when I'm wrong. You've been wrong sometime in your life. Yes. So, so, so you know you got to pick up the guilt trip. And don't lay it all on me because when we compare what we've done, compare what the others done, sin is sin. Alright? All right? And then number two, you not communicate your thoughts of forgiveness. You can't forgive somebody just thinking about it. Hmm? I know somebody may have said some stuff to you 25 years ago. And you, you might have said some things about somebody else 30 years ago. But what that person said hurts you worse than what you see. You got to learn to communicate, Lord, I forgive them. That's in your mind. But you got to speak that. You got to communicate your forgiveness. Because, see, when God gets ready to forgive you, He strips you off. He don't go back and remind you of what you've done. Well, it's never that way. Yeah. Then, what you ought to do is complete your gift uh, and be free. You just forgive that person because when you're not forgiven, well, it is a burden on you. Yeah. It's not on that person. All right. 
It's on you. Amen. When you don't forgive, it locks you up. Amen. It handcuffs you. Amen. You don't take a footstep nowhere without feeling some guilt. Matter of fact, most of us, uh, it's our human nature to avoid that person that we feel like have done us wrong. We don't want to go nowhere near. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, we want to stay far away from them as we possibly can. But the best thing that we can do in order to free ourselves so that we don't walk into trouble is to just say, I forgive you. You know, I, I, I know that's in the past, but I, I forgive you. So if they don't accept it, don't you worry about that. Put the ball in their court, so to speak. You put it on their shoulders to accept your forgiveness or not. If they reject it, it's on them. You have done your part. Here in the text, Jesus gives Simon a good example. And when he talks about this sinful woman coming in, anointing the feet of Jesus. But he overlooked what he didn't do. Or he overlooked some things that he should have done. It was his house. And in biblical days, it was customary due to the dust and the weariness of someone's travel. They didn't have uh, Maseratis and Cadillacs and uh, BMWs and Fords and Lincolns and Chevrolets to travel in back then. They had to walk most of the time. And so when they went into somebody's house, their custom was that they washed their feet. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on, Bible says. They, they had to wash their feet. But, but, but you see, uh, Jesus reminded Simon, here you are talking about this woman being a sinner. Here you are putting her down as to what she done. But look, I came into your house to sit down to eat, and you didn't even offer me a basin of water to wash my feet. So how are you going to talk about this woman who came in here with a bottle of tears and wash my feet yes. and dry them with their hair. Yes. And you didn't even offer me a, a, a basin of water nor a towel to even dry my feet. And on top of that, Simon, look what you did. She came in and worshipped me and she hasn't been anywhere uh, except my feet since I've been in here. Yeah. You ain't even worshipped me. All right, man. You ain't even offered to hug me and kiss me. You ain't offered to do nothing but this woman. Amen. Come on, sin. This woman has given me everything since the time I came has not ceased to kiss my feet. In other words, she has not ceased to worship me. When you are forgiven for your sin, when you are forgiving others for what they've done for you, to you, don't you know you cannot be forgiven until you do forgive? Lord, forgive me as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. And Lord, lead me not into temptation. But I want you to deliver me now from whatever I have done in the past. Yes. Uh, <laughs> deliver me. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. But he said, now, look what this woman did. Say, you didn't, you didn't anoint my head with no oil. But look what she did. This woman had anointed my feet with the pressure ointment. Yes. <laughs> and here you are complaining All right. about me forgiving this woman, this sinful woman. You're complaining. I think sometimes we come into church and we think just because our name is on the road, we got a right to go out and talk about somebody. Amen. We got to go. You, you, you don't have a right to put nobody down. <laughs> You don't have a right to do that because, first of all, if you examine yourself, you look and thank God for you just being here. Yes. God has allowed you to be here. Well. Otherwise, it would be bad on you if you didn't. And, and, and look at here, he said, Now, nah, but this woman has anointed my feet with this ointment, wherefore I say unto you, okay. her sins, which were many, are forgiven. For she loved much. In other words, she showed her love. You got to show your love. Amen. You got to show somebody that you are Christ's child. But to whom little is given, the same loveth little. Yes. And look what he said. He said to her, thou sins are forgiven. Yes. Lord, 
Lord help me here. Many of us uh, want to go back and review our life story. Many of us don't want God to show up Amen. in our life. Yes. Many of us want to be like a vampire. All right. We want to hide in the shades of darkness. Yes. We want to do our dirty deeds while the sun is down. Yes. But don't you know that the sun is going to rise? Yes. Sometimes it's different for in our lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the sun will rise All in right. us yes. in a different time of our own lives. Yes. Sometimes it comes up in our midlife. Sometimes it comes up in early adulthood. Sometimes it comes up later on in life. Right. When we've had time to sit around and evaluate yes. just how good God has been to us. Yes. And we ask the question, why, oh Lord, have you brought me through this? And you brought me through that. But I'm so glad that you bought me. Because every now and then, I disown you. Every now and then, I haven't acted like the child that you want me to be. Every now and then, I allow my tongue to tell a lie. Every now and then, I allow my tongue to swear and use your name in vain. But I'm so glad, so glad. See my need. Every now and then, I have to bend my knees and ask God to forgive me for the sins I've committed. I don't know about you, but you're not looking at a sin creature. Yeah, I have been a sinful creature, but I'm headed for Mount Zion, way out on the hill. And if I get there, surely. So good. Yes, O N. Rose on Easter Sunday morning to forgive me of my sin. I'm so glad. No matter what I've done, He has forgiven me, even though my sins were many. Born in obstruction, born in iniquity. Yet He reached down, He touched His hand.
doors of the church. There might be some 